Now let's have a look at another code in which I'll explain you that how you can handle different different types of exceptions in a separate catch block or in different different catch blocks. Here's, here we go. So I have the same method, my method integer i, which is accepting just uh, a variable like a value. And uh, let's see what we have got in here. So we have got try block, of course, we have to write down every code which might throw an exception inside the try block in order to handle it well later on. Uh, and inside this try block, what I have written down is that if i is equals to is equals to zero, then this code should get executed. If it is greater than zero, then this code should get executed. And if it is less than zero, of course, I mean, if it is not greater than zero and if it's not zero, then it is definitely less than zero, then this code should get executed. Let's have a look that uh, what different type of uh, exceptions uh, are getting thrown in these um, if else block, if or else if blocks, right? So over here, uh, this code has got the same problem that we had in the earlier program, which is a's value is not defined, hence it will throw an exception. And let me tell you which exception this code will throw. It will throw null pointer exception. Uh, null pointer exception is just a type of exception. Uh, it's, it's a predefined or a system defined exception, uh, which, which is thrown whenever uh, you try to use a value which is not defined for any of the variables and we'll understand it in a deeper level uh, in another example but yeah this code will return will will not return will throw a null pointer exception right and uh, so this is another type of exception null pointer exception and if let's say i's value is greater than zero then this code will get executed and this in this code what we are trying to do is we are trying to insert an account uh, into the database without the uh, required fields uh, without defining the required fields value. So this type of execution will throw an exception of D, uh, of the type DML exception, right? This DML exception. So whenever you are trying to uh, like execute any DML statement, uh, DML exceptions are thrown if there is some problem that occurs while performing that DML operation, right? So at this particular oh. At this particular statement, uh, a DML exception will occur. And if it is less than this, then we've got this code that we want to be executed. So over here, what we've done is, uh, we have created a list which has got three elements, one, two, three. And over here, we are trying to calculate the sum of all of them by this uh, statement in which I list four uh, is also written. So like, but there are only three elements inside this list, right? So how can we access the fourth value? So when we are trying to save this particular program, it gets, gets saved without a problem. Why? Because the elements or the number of elements inside a list uh, can only be calculated at runtime or is only evaluated at runtime, uh, not while compiling it. So it will get saved perfectly fine without any error. But while we'll execute it or while we'll run this particular program, this will throw a list exception, right? Uh, which generally occurs so yeah, this list exception generally occurs whenever we are trying to access an element which is not present uh, at that particular index, index inside a list. So yeah, that's how it goes. Save. Okay. So now over here, what's, uh, yeah, this, so th in, in this try block, based on the, uh, based on the value that we'll be getting inside this uh, integer i, different codes will get executed and it will throw different, different types of exceptions. So in order to catch different, different types of exceptions, uh, we need to have different, different catch blocks with the respective uh, exception. And we can write down different, different code to handle different type of exceptions right so over here we have created different catch blocks let's have a look at it number one catch block null pointer exception so for the first one we have got null pointer exception so we have written it down like this uh, and inside it we are all what we are doing is we are just debugging i execute when there is a null pointer exception that occurs in the try block that's it similarly we have got another catch block which will catch dml exception so so in this code if there will be a DML exception that will be thrown, it will go to this catch block. But if there is a null pointer exception, then this it will go to this catch block. 
and if there is a list exception right oh, oops if there is a list exception then the another catch block which we have got in here will get executed okay so uh, we do not have that written down let me just write it down right now I am just giving the variable names accordingly, it does not make any difference anyway, does not make, make any difference anyway. So, yeah, so if it will throw a list exception, it will go to this catch block and if there is any other exception apart from these three exceptions that will occur or that will be thrown inside the try block, this generic exception will catch it and after catching it, it will execute the uh, it will execute the this catch block or uh, execute the code which is written inside this particular catch block. So yeah, that's what it is. And finally, again, always gets executed irrespective of whether uh, whether an exception is thrown or not. So that's how it goes. Now let's understand the execution flow of this particular code. Uh, give me a moment. I'm just trying to align it accordingly. Okay. So let's say that there is a null pointer exception that occurred in this code, right? And it must have occurred in, on line 14. So if it occurred on line 14, no other code will get executed uh, and it will directly go to the catch block and it will execute this code. And after executing this code, it will go back again to the finally block and will execute that finally block, right? With, it's, it's down there. So that, that, that's something that will happen if uh, the null pointer exception will occur. But if in case, let's say, there is a DML exception which occurred. So in that case, it will go directly to DML exception. And the code written inside uh, in this catch, code written inside this catch block will get executed. And after this, it will go to the finally block. And it will execute the finally block and will just go away. And uh, similarly, If uh, there is a list exception that occurs, let me tell you what will happen. It will go to this catch block, will execute this code and will go to the finally block, just like that. And if there is some other exception that occurs at any point of time in, uh, in this particular code uh, or in any, any particular line, which is except uh, which is some, something other than null pointer exception, DML exception and list exception, then it will go from that point to the generic exception. It will execute the code which is written inside the catch block of generic exception and then it will execute the finally block like this. So that's how it goes. Okay. Now there's something that you need to uh, take care of uh, while writing this program down. Mm, I hope you understood first of all uh, how to actually handle different different types of exceptions. But there is one thing that you always need to make sure uh, while using a generic exceptions with different different catch blocks, and that is that you should never ever write down this generic exception at the first level or at or, or at at okay or at any other level than the last one. And let me tell you why. Because if you'll just write it down on the first place then all of the exceptions which will occur, I think there's a problem that it shows now. Exception type already caught, exception type already caught, exception type already caught. So let me tell you what this uh, error basically means. If it will throw a null pointer exception, this generic exception will catch it. So this null pointer ex uh, exception block is, is not at all required. So why is it even there? So it's an unreachable code. Uh, so I mean either just delete it or just put this generic exception at last. That's why these, uh, like th this error is coming up. Okay. Um, similarly, if there will, be a, there will be a DML exception, this generic exception will catch it, or if there will be a list exception, this generic exception will catch it. So all of the other blocks or all of, all of the other catch blocks are of no use now, right? They are, no, they are of no use or, and, and these are like, 
this is just a code which can never be reached or it's an unreachable code which is not allowed which was not allowed in java as well and which is not allowed in apex as well so that is why you should always and always make sure that the generic exception is written down in the last catch block if you have multiple catch blocks with a single try block and also one more thing the, this try catch block thing or try catch finally uh, block thing can be nested as well so there's no problem with that okay now as soon as i uh, cut it and paste it at the last point just above finally uh, it is working absolutely fine it is showing no errors to us now i hope that makes sense